got it. Um, a general, how are you doing? And then I'm picking a question off the list. All right, I kind of am torn between what was the worst haircut you ever had and what was the worst fashion trend you ever rocked. Um, I'm going to say worst haircut. I have really curly hair and more so when I was a kid and they cut it really short and it just looked like a triangle head. And worst fashion trend was probably that I wore spandex for like three years straight in different shiny colors, like shorts, not even, not even pants. And I will pass it to Juan. Well, um, I think like I have uh, bust my hair like uh, sometimes and I always look awful, but I don't know. It's sometimes really fresh to do it. And I think that the worst uh, uh, fashion trend is uh, that once I had like a bunch of colors, but they were like um, um, made from from wood and from like um, seashells. So it was like like very hippie, but I had like four of them, like five of them. And yeah, I, I just le left them. Um, I'll pass to Septimus. So the question is like the worst hairstyle I had ever. And the second one? Fashion, the worst fashion you ever rocked. Oh, oh yeah, that's an easy one. Every time I'm out, I was a kid, my mom was uh, dressing me, so no cool. <laughs> and yeah, my worst haircut. Uh, I, when I was uh, very little, I was like, oh, I want to get the long hair, but my hair was instead of going long, was like, and it was not cool. <laughs> but yeah, I'll pass it to Nate. Oh, that's tough. Um, so. Uh, worst hair. Uh, I was. I, I've, I've been a basketball player all my life, and uh, at one point, uh, we had a big game where the losers had to get the hair of the uh, winner's choice, and so they all decided that I was going to get cornrows, and I had to rock cornrows for uh, two months, and it was very painful, but <laughs> it, it was a uh, it was a fun. Um, the other aspect is fashion. Um, uh, I would say probably cargo sh shorts. I rocked those for a very long time, longer than I should have. But uh, yeah, and uh, I will pass to Ivy. Oh, thanks, Nate. So uh, I had this, I've had the same hair since I started growing up. So I don't know if I, if, if I've had any uh, bad haircut. But when I was young, my mom used to cut my bangs so short. So maybe that's the worst one. And when terms of oh, it, it, uh, about the fashion, I think uh, it's the same with Nate. I used to wear these cargo pants together with this high, thick um, sandals <laughs> because they came out in the same year. So I, I used to wear them together. And I think I look uh, terrible. <laughs> When that during that time, and I pass it to Tam. Um, I'm gonna say I'm still making the worst fashion mistake, and it's just like Birkenstocks all the time, and I'm currently doing it. So I'm this is the part of my life where I'm making the worst fashion decisions ever, and I will pass to Olivia. Well, I hope I didn't make my um, worst hair mistake yesterday. I'm just gonna let you guys judge it. <laughs> my, um, I had so many hair types. Uh, I shaved it a couple of times. I had it, I had it all, all ways. And I think worst uh, fashion uh, choice was like neon side trends skater when I was a teenager except I wasn't a skater um so yeah that was a bit <laughs> rough and I'll pass it to Mitch I would have to style I have
Can you guys hear Mitch? I can't hear Mitch. I can't hear him either. Mitch, maybe uh, restart. Restart. Uh, just like exit and enter. You'll have to get your sound working eventually. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I am crazy. I, I used to do crazy shit with my hair. Like the stupidest things ever. I had a... The first time I had... Uh, I One time my buddy was bleaching, like doing... Some friend was doing highlights and I just took all of it and just rubbed it in, right? And let it sit there for hours and it just fried. Fried my hair. And I just looked home, like it, it grew out. It was like orange. And I just let it grow out for like seven months or eight months. And it was just like half fried orange. And then it was just, and then I took that and I shaved off the, the top, but left like bangs and had a mullet out the back. And we called it the shooter mullet because I looked like I should shoot myself in the face with a shotgun. Right. It was like a, and then, and then that started a pattern of every year I would do nothing, let my hair grow, and then do something crazy and stupid. So next year I did the bald man, where I just shaved off this, and that's it, and bicked it, you know, like a bald dude. And then had like long hair coming out, and I would wear a hat, and I could be normal, or I could just go like that. And I actually lost my driver's license, and I had to get a driver's license with that hair haircut i went in with a hat and the guy told me to take it off for the driver's license picture so i have a driver's license of me with that hair uh, i also did a giant mohawk and i that i that i bleached and then used a marker to make the bottom green and because i was this big a basketball fan so I, I did that i did a couple others those are probably the most important ones and then a uh, fashion mistake i don't know but back when i, I used to be this huge bat basketball fan of this, this team Seattle Supersonics and every day for years I would only wear Sonics gear every day I'd wear a Sonics shirt except if they lost the day before if they lost the day before I'd be in mourning and it was the only day that I wouldn't wear Sonics gear uh and I'll pass it to Mitch to see if he can uh nope no dice there's like a little microphone button though uh, okay, how about Eduardo? Did Eduardo go? Oh, um, there is no way to top that history, Griff. Uh, so, my worst haircut was during quarantine. I cut myself uh, my hair, and I was, because I was in the mountains in the middle of nowhere, and every, every day I will find another mistake or something else that I did wrong on my hair. Or like, when it grew, it grew a different, a different pace because I had different lengths in different parts of the hair. And worst fashion, um, I'm not a religious person, but I tended, I had this thing for buying necklaces with uh, crosses. So I had this collection of necklaces of crosses and sandals. For some reason, I loved to use sandals when I was like 18. So all I had was sandals. Like I could go to a meeting with sandals. So thanks to the Lord, that time has passed. I will pass it on to uh, Dan. I'm not entirely sure about the question. <laughs> Just to get what, my was your, hair, but... what was your worst hairstyle and fashion that you ever rocked? Oh my God. Uh... <laughs> No, I mean, in terms of hair, I, I don't really have much to say. I just been cutting my hair since I was 11. So I, I had no idea what's a barbershop. And, like, I, had, I don't know. So while traveling, I, 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 I just screw up. I, I, don't, I don't screw up because I want. I just screw up. I cut my hair once without a mirror. That wasn't fun. <laughs> and shaved without a mirror. But I learned how to do it. So I can basically close my eyes and, and kind of cut my hair. So that's one thing. Uh, and a fashion thingy. Um, somebody sent me a picture when I graduated. And anyway, I used to, to DJ and throw around parties. And uh, I, at one time, I found like a, this wheel from a roller skate. 
was kind of like you know it's shining the dark it was kind of and i put it around my neck and i everybody will be like oh wheel guy what's up and i was the wheel guy everywhere so anyway they got they let me into everybody what's up because i was a, the guy with the wheel and i graduated with that wheel on my neck so yeah i guess <laughs> that's that's something i i don't know what else to share. i had no idea who hasn't gone yet uh Marco? Marco. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna have to disappoint you. I never actually had a bad, bad haircut and bad fashion. I was always charming and nice looking guy and beautiful and gorgeous until now. I think now I have the worst haircut and worst fashion style and I'm kind of searching for myself. So I guess now that's it. But really, I, I really always had a nice haircut and nice fashion, really. But now is the worst. <laughs> and I, I can't, I'm, I'm buying like I'm buying shoes for like three months and can't find shoes. Uh, you know, sweaters. My wife bu 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 buys me these hoodies and all that kind of stuff, and I'm never. It's it's never a good one, and I throw it away. And then I go to the shop and search for another one. It's it's just not the right one. So it's like I mean I don't, I'm in a worst um, a period of time right now in, in regards to fashion and haircuts. That's it. Terrible. Terrible. Okay, we need a fashionista to come your way. Somebody go in Croatia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'll pass. Last person is Durga Das. How are you today, Durga Das? We're talking about bad fashion and hair pasts. Well, all I have to do is turn my video on and show you how I shaved all my hair off. And that should be enough of an answer <laughs> for you. <laughs> I when I lived in the monastery, we I cut it like this every two weeks. There's nothing really fashionable about it, um, as far as fashion is concerned. When I lived in the monastery, I wore exactly the same clothing every single day for five years. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't never change. So that, so the least, the most narrow fashion ever is having no hair at all and wearing exactly the same clothes for uh, an epic amount of time. That's awesome. And Santi just joined us. Perfect timing to reveal what was the worst haircut or fashion that you ever had. And how are you doing today? Oh, thank you, Jess. Uh, well, I when I was 18, I was living in the U.S. as an exchange student. And I had very, very, very long hair. And I almost didn't cut my hair in the whole year. And I, when I finally went to the barber shop, it was kind of sad to have that haircut. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that was probably the worst experience for myself. But I think I explained this to someone. My first job, my aunt had a hairdresser and I was uh, just helping her when I was 14 years old. So washing the hair of old ladies was a hell of an experience. Oh my God. I, I would, the diversity is shocking of all of the experiences that everybody shared. Oh, that was a fun one. Okay, I don't have a good segue. Um, but yes, we are in a comms meeting. That was way, way more fun. Um, yeah, craziness. I would love to see some photos to accompany all these stories. Uh, okay, so we are jumping in to the agenda today. Um, if we marco do you want to lead us through what's on here and then if anybody's got anything not on the list but the kind of chat about the main pressing things and if anybody needs support or wants to bring anything in i will also add i just spoke to craig this morning he's got the praise quant blog i gave him some feedback yeah, and, uh, so i think that's almost cool, ready to push cool. out Yeah, should, should I go ahead for now, Jess? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of <clears throat> sorry agenda items. They're mostly issues from the from the Zen Hub that I just want to get some updates from you guys first. So the, the one first one that is over there is the onboarding video. I put a current status there. A um, couple of more interviews to be done. Um, I'm not sure. Hopefully this week, I guess. Uh, we don't have Manu on the call. No, we don't. Um, but anyway, just wanted to get first updates. Um, if you know when when will this be done, or are there any blockers, or 
um, did Mano receive um, the recordings and stuff like that? Um, yeah, let me just check the message from him. He said, yeah, he's in edit. He's starting to edit the raw. I said, just go ahead, start editing. There's no reason to wait. The last person I'm waiting for is Zargum. I scheduled a call over the weekend. He canceled then yesterday. He got had to cancel. So I'm hoping to catch him today. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're pretty much good. I will double check with him if he needs right. anything else. But yeah, the main heavy work is just cutting the raw. And then when he finishes that, we'll sit together to look at it. He's uh, got to kind of like um, transcribe it. I have a question regarding... Um, I, I just did the interview with Nate and I just uploaded it, by the way. Um, I just updated the, the sheet, uh, Marco. But besides that, I spoke with him. Um, and I don't know, like... And this is just, um, I want the feedback on this because I spoke to him regarding, um, he, regarding this video and then the videos he was supposed, he's going to do about the hatch and the visualizations of it. Um, and then he's having his priority to make the community video. Um, not the hatch video. And, and this is, I don't mean to be rude or anything. But I felt that our priority is to have visualization of the hatch for sending it out. So I think there's a misconfusion on his approach to it. Uh, but yeah, so just to get consensus on this. I explained yeah. to yeah, sorry, I was just gonna say I explained to him that there was like this onboarding community side with the community interviews, and then there's a separate like hatcher outreach pieces that need to go. One being the hatch. Um, like diagram uh and one being the essential you know later how to videos when the dap is released yeah and i i don't remember that we clearly communicated that the hatch video was a priority uh and from our last week call and spring planning i think we communicated or or at least to give the impression that the onboarding video the why community video is like important and should be done uh, and so there was no mention about a hatch video. So I don't think he uh, he's aware of that. Um, like, yeah. if we're going to shift those priorities, that's fine. Fine with me. We just, um, I mean, just, just let me know. Uh, but since he already started working on the, on the community video uh, and cutting and doing the edits, um, just shifting focus right now, I think I would, I would rather let him finish that part right now and then jump into the second hatch video. I agree. Just, just uh, for the creative process, so we don't like break the creative process over there, and then yeah, shift him on other stuff, and then just back to the. Yeah. Uh, Can you just ask for clarification. When we're saying the hatch video, we're specifically talking about a kind of animated hatch process. Is that accurate? Um, we did a meeting with uh, Jeff, Jess, and Manu, and Mitch was there. So I think too, where we, uh, where Jeff walked through walk us through the diagrams that he had designed to explain the hatch. And um, and Manu just picked that has to sort of bring those um, bring those diagrams to a simplify or explain in, in a visualization way. Uh, so those are the videos I'm referring to. But I do agree with Marco. Uh, it's just I, I mentioned this so we don't lose track of this as the next as the next thing to do regarding uh, visual content creation. Uh, and one more. Yeah, and sorry, my understanding, Eduardo, was that it was only a graphic and not a video for the hatch. It was only just the, the next iteration and draft of the diagram. And he told me in his message, I just looked, he's working on the diagram. So the, it's not in going to be in video form for some time. I think that's kind of like the first step. But Okay. And that's the thing I wanted to ask. It's the issue number 64, where there should have been a, some visual diagram, flow diagram, beautiful, whatever bit to be done. But then, uh, you know, Edu, uh, you suggested it would be maybe better to communicate that with the video. Um, so, yeah, uh, I just wanted to get the confirmation. Is that the issue that we're talking about, issue number 64? Yes, I think so, too. Should that be then? Should we keep that issue uh, written? 
that way or should we turn that into a video? Um, in the message that I have with him, um, it's, he, he understands it's a video. He just asked me to, he basically in the last messages, he explained it to me like he, he will ask his producer, whatever guy who does this, if he had bandwidth to do it. Um, and he will get yeah. back to me. This was the, yeah. the conversation. And, and he also reached out to me and sent me some sample videos showcasing like, this is what we can do, um, you know, uh, and this is what you can expect with the, with all the videos in the future. Nice. Um, so I guess like you guys, maybe uh, since you were already in touch with him and, and chatting about it, um, just get a confirmation uh, regarding this issue 64. Um, maybe then we can assign him to that issue um, and, and get an estimate on, on when that can, like first draft could be done after he finishes the onboarding video. Perfect. And this one, uh, 377, this one is that the video that will go actually in that placeholder on the Hatch app itself, right? Um, is, that, is this the same no. one that we're describing? No, it's not the same. No. no, 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 no. No, it's not the same one. Uh, the Hatch app video, I don't think, um, I think there's something that we said we're not going to be doing that one or we're going to be doing that one. I wasn't really sure. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, there's the, yeah this one. Mm. Yeah, this one it, it needed a storyboard. It's you mean they create a storyboard for onboarding video three seven seven? Yes. Yeah, here we we. It says hatch up. Yeah, hatch up. Here probably we're gonna need a storyboard first. Um, I think we should just change the titles to be more clear. That's what I tried to do. Like, um, let's just call it community video and hatch hatch app video or something. Because yeah, the hatch oh, app video would be when the hat the app actually is up and all those like onboard onboarding, onboarding materials like walkthroughs, how tos, and if you want to combine on the front end of the app how to with the community or just the community and the why because the ui ux is good enough that you don't need an explainer of how to use it that was my kind of strategy and like tree of pieces and then yeah eduardo i will leave the coordinating of mano to you Ma mano to you i am stepping back and i'm just here support is needed um so that way there's not too much communications happening and i'll tell him to please confer with you and then just come to me if he needs help with like the actual video editing. Does that work? And is that a little helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah that works. All right. Uh, and, and by the way, I think we already changed the titles last time on our last meeting. Oh, and I think you did that. So it's clearly now community video, hatch up video. There was just maybe a confusion with that, like uh, stock beautiful stock photo, whatever diagram of the DAO that we wanted to turn into a video. So like that, that will be then the third video or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Ado will um, brief us when he um, hears back from Manu. Um, okay, that's all for the videos. Uh, next topic is the um, SEO. So I heard back from Rosa. She sent the keywords list. Uh, that's done. The issue is uh, closed. The next one uh, on her plate was um, to uh, double check WordPress plugins if they're all set up based on those keywords and HubSpot and whatever, uh, something around the SEO. Um, she's not, she didn't respond yet to me, but I think. Um, she will and that whatever there is to be done will be done uh and after that uh there's uh, one more issue uh nate it's related to you uh it's ad adapting the content so just a progress update any blockers or you know whatever whatever is going on with that one yeah so the the seo stuff um i i need to get access to um both the blog and social media um, but I'm not sure if that's possible or who I talk to for that. Yeah. So recently we set up this uh, digital security management kind of thing. So basically there's uh, there's a key base um, channel where you should get be invited to. And there, uh, I think Zepti can, uh, can step in here. 
uh, and and lead Nate to yeah. what he needs. Uh, but but regard, uh, yeah, on the database we have a who, what the point of contact and the point of contact for the medium is Chess or Craig. Uh, there is not the credentials there. Well, Zepti, that was the question for me is you were discussing changing is the sign in and login still the same or had it been changed yet? I didn't know if you were changing or if we can still use the same credentials. Uh, no, I, really, I, I wanted to change it, but since there is many people working, I don't know when it's going to be the best moment. But I think uh, for security measure, uh, Twitter and Gmail can be changed. But yeah, just that. Uh, I don't know uh, when we decide it's the best moment. Uh, it's just one second. Uh, I can do it in any moment. Um, all right, we just wanna we just wanna get Nate uh, access to Medium or whatever he needs to. I think uh, to I task. will double check. I definitely have him as a writer, but I'll check. I thought I added him as editor, but I'll add you as editor, Nate, and then let me know if you have any issues. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, and. Uh, uh, all, and the keywords and the intent stuff is all, all good. She's done with that, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's actually inside the um, the issue. Uh, and if not, there's a linked issue. And I think I I think I also shared that somewhere in the in Discord. Um, it's it's an Excel sheet file. So basically, you can open that one. You can see the list of keywords and some of the suggestions based on those keywords. So it's all good. Uh, I assume you'll just you know go through the medium and see if they're you know if we're mentioning those keywords, maybe adding some hashtags at the bottom, maybe do the same thing on our profiles and other social media accounts, uh, whatever. Just like you know here and there, updating that um, based on that. So that's a start. And then for whatever new content we're going to be producing and publishing, I will then encourage everyone to just grab that sheet uh, with with the keywords um, and like look around. Add those hashtags uh, because, like, we wanna uh, we wanna work on our SEO based on those keywords. Yeah, and uh, I I figured that we would iterate on that list as well as time goes on. And I know you you said yeah. we had some some type of analytics tool that we can utilize in terms of uh, of getting the search search rates. Yeah, um, right now we're we're just using Google Analytics, uh, and further uh, down the road we can, um, you know, I hope that R Rosa will be able to set up some funnels and all that kind of stuff and trackings and metrics. Um, but for starters, we just have the Google Analytics, Analytics setup, um, and I think uh, we can add people to that. So whoever is interested to uh, monitor that. Um, I think um, Zepti or whoever has the, the Gmail account can add you as a viewer or a member or something like that. So yeah, um, just for your information. And in the comms channel, I'm just going to share the issue about the uh, SEO keywords list. Uh, and there's the there's the link to to that sheet. OK. Yeah, that'll be, a, that'll be my first priority. Uh, I know it's been an open issue for a minute, so uh, I'll work on that <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah all right great no worries um okay on on that just on on the seo on the website i uh, just one more um well info that uh we have a new contributor uh his name is uh, merlin uh and he's been working with us at the common simulator and he's going to be helping us a little bit um with his front-end developer skills on um, you know cleaning up the wordpress maybe fixing some issues here and there He's not. He's, he does not have a lot of time, but um, we're gonna we're gonna use all of his time that uh, is available. So that's great news. Um, and yeah, that's for the website and everything else. Does anybody have any questions or one suggestions, comments, whatever? I just I know that there's another contributor who volunteered who has a lot of WordPress experience. I don't know if you've been in touch mm -hmm. with Christopher yet, but he has uh, extensive experience and is looking for ways to help. Someone mentioned it to me. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was Jess. Maybe it was someone. But I'm like, I can't remember anymore. So please, um, you know, lazy web, uh, copy paste again, scream about it so that I can hear it. Uh, and and also like next steps or you know should I contact him uh, or I don't know. Yep, you can reach out to him. He's he's sort of waiting too. He's he's helping a lot with the. 
um, Swiss Association DAP right now, but I had mm -hmm. a session with him to sort of figure out his skill sets and um, just I put together a small profile of him and uh, I'll shoot it to you now. And he did Great. mention the website specifically because he does have a lot of uh, WordPress experience, although it's not his favorite, he does, I think he can just easily hit the ground running there. Great, that's great to hear. Um, great, great, that's that's actually good. I mean, Merlin, uh, like uh, he will be working on Give It stuff as well. So it's always good to have more contributors. So I'm glad to actually uh, reach out to Christopher maybe first um, and let him handle some of the um, most critical issues, whatever we might have. So yeah, all right, thanks. Um, that's it for the website part uh, and Next on the agenda, someone added the time zones. So whoever added this one might want to talk about it. Yeah, that's me. Um, I think we're Great. still sending out tweets um, with a six hour difference between EST and CET. But for two weeks, it's only five hours. And it's only eight hours instead of the normal nine hours between PST and CET. And our community call tomorrow is at 7 p.m. CET, not the usual uh 8 p.m cet so just uh we're in dst time like this this two-week period where the us has moved their out their clocks an hour forward but europe has not yet so uh just i would say pay attention in the i, I sent ivy a message too so i know it's on her radar but we just need to check our comms to either shift the one or the other the the calendar entry is based on when the when the uh, meeting, uh, when the calendar entry was, uh, where the calendar entry was added. So if it was a calendar ent entry that was added in the CET time zone, then it won't switch until the 28th. But if it was created in C PST or EST, then it has already switched. So I would say just check check the timing of all meetings before we communicate them. I, I was gonna ask, I mean, uh, this becoming a, you know, we're, very global and so this becoming an issue into the future would it be easier for everybody to practice using utc um just i don't know it's just a posing question what i found is utc is no one's time zone so it's kind of that's kind of like it's like a safe it's like hey look everyone suffers because for the good of the whole right but sometimes uh, usually we just pick a winner uh, that, that's what I found has been and and say, oh yeah, like Giveth was always Barcelona because we have a house there, you know, and it's like, okay, we plant our flag, it's Barcelona time, you know, uh, the TEC, maybe we stick with Europe time, maybe, yeah, or, you know, the other opportunity, the, the other way to see it is an opportunity every six months. <laughs> we adjust our schedules you know and we say hey are these these mean times suck right yeah i thought so let's change them you know and uh, we take that as an opportunity to every six months to just be like yeah let's move these let's move these things around a little bit but no, i don't i don't it's not my call yeah thanks for the feedback Reef. great feedback um well i guess uh for the next two weeks uh we just have to be careful um and you know take that into account uh just that one hour less for or more for each time zone um, but the, the calendar is always on point right like if you follow the calendar you won't miss anything right it's a question i think i think in general yes uh, that's how I found out yesterday that there is a meeting that I should attend at that time at that time and I was almost late and mm -hmm. But so, I guess, yes. Um. Thanks. Yeah, but for example, like the community call usually happens at 8 p.m. CET, but the next two weeks, anyone in CET has to join at 7 p.m. because it uh, was, I think, created in PST. So uh, that's just, you know, something we should be aware of for two weeks, that's all. Yeah, you know, we're, we're sending, you know, we're sending humans to the moon we're exploring Mars, but we can't get the calendars right. Like that's that's terrible. <laughs> but they did world. crash a Mars rover, millions of dollars because they didn't convert to the metric system. NASA. You see? Yeah. Nation issues. Uh, 
Can I throw in an, another random topic that I'm kind of dropping in all the meetings? Um, Go ahead. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's this legal issue that we, the common stack trusted seed, cannot really protect any work that's done in the name of the TE Commons directly. We can protect every other thing. We can protect stuff that happens in one hive. We can protect stuff that for the common stack. We can protect stuff that happens all over the place. But we have this GitHub repo where we do all of our work that's called TE Commons. And there's a little bit of a a challenge because the trusted seed is do is can do everything except launch the TE Commons. The TE Commons has to launch itself. This is like a, a legal issue. So um we kind of need to the talking with Sam and the other GitHub people, we, the easiest solution is just to change the name of the organization on GitHub. And this, this is a relatively simple solution, but it doesn't, um, sorry, there's a motorcycle here. It doesn't, um, it, it breaks a lot of things. It breaks all of our links and we need to come up with another name. So I just want to warn you guys, this is happening. I don't know. If you guys want to take it on or who's going to take it on, it might be the community stewards who take it on. We'll see. Uh, to pick a name for the repo and then, you know, oh, crap, all of our links are broken. Uh, so, how, how different should how different should the name be? Uh, I mean, and it, it should be something related to the common stack and not not the T commons because it should Can in an ideal world. It would be like, oh, the general purpose common stack design repo. You know, that's going to be used by a lot. Can you of fix it? Sorry. Can you fix it further up the tree? And maybe it is a better issue for stewards, but can you fix it further up the tree? Like do like a meta repo and just make TEC a branch so that you don't have to alter the links or the name? I think we. It can well, be like a division be, of a higher level repo. Um, that's that's exactly what we want would do is we would change the organization instead of the repos so all the repos are under the t commons organization and we would just change the t commons organization if we do that then all the code that's in there still works um because most of the references kind of leave out the org assuming that you're within the org uh but um yeah but it will change all the links that we have to github in uh, all the google docs and medium posts and there's no really good way around that. And is the scope of this only GitHub? That's I mean, is the, it Discord that's or the, anything else? I think. Sorry, what's the other place? Discord or um, Notion or Gitbook or any place else where we have TE Commons. Well, for instance, I I, I think the big piece here is protecting the developers that are developing the code base for the economy. And that's why it's actually important. Like, I don't think anyone's going to really complain about be like, oh, that Discord was, you know, but if we are using code from this code base, that's the, where we get the big win, right? And where we can mm -hmm. say, oh, all this development was happening by the, by the common stack. And so it's protected by our legal Swiss association. But if it, we can't protect the TE Commons development work. But yeah, I mean, I have the same question and maybe then it's a legal question of what needs protection? I mean, does some of the communications need protection? I think the main thing is just not saying investment advice, but yeah, I feel, I feel like maybe this is more of a stewards thing um yeah because there's two more comms issues that felt pretty important and i yeah. don't know if this let's is a on. place to go yeah. in a wormhole let's move on i added it but it's good to be aware of yeah for tomorrow yeah okay. thanks jess and maybe just just flag if there are any issues we should be aware of for communications and if that protection needs some kind of extension via our the communications It'll just be the broken links. There's going to be a bunch of broken links in all of our documents, so we'll have to go fix them. That's cool.
cool. So we can make an issue for that. Uh, all right. So yeah, the next um, two. Okay, yeah. Next two things. Yes. Yeah. One of them's quick, and the other one I'm just like interested in where we're at. Yeah, and you were the one that added the uh, praise quant and hatcher outreach content. Yeah, so the praise quant blog is ready to go. I think Griff, you and Tam, if you wanted to look at it otherwise, I mean, it looks great. I gave him a little bit of feedback. He was just going to edit, and then that needs a tweet and a distribution. So if someone could take on distributing the news blog, it just needs to go in, you know, our TE Commons channel, comm channel and um if i uh, common stack telegram so i don't know marco if there's an issue for that for the content piece to be distributed and then for the hatcher outreach content was just a uh question for um, jeff actually is onboarding the entire curve labs team and he was asking if eduardo the status of we had discussed that like five steps to hatch like super high level TL tldr piece um, if that is in draft, Mitch, or where where that is uh, before we yeah, onboard Mitch, a bunch uh, of people. Mitch did a great work, and I think it's, uh, I don't know, Mitch can explain it itself. <laughs> Mitch, are you there? I don't think Mitch, oh. can you talk, Mitch? No, no, Mitch. Uh, but I did edit this, and uh, I think that I, I sorry, I, I edited it like yesterday or something, uh, or this morning. I don't know. And he's gonna, I assume he's gonna accept those changes or reject them and then call it good. Yeah, um, there is a, I have this concern. I don't know if everyone it's uh or is someone who's taking care of this. Um, we have, uh, for example, the TLDR. We have now these five steps. We have the hatch uh, made by Nate, the hatch FAQ made by Nate, and so on. So my question is, is someone taking care of aligning all this content that have to check that the, the, the main concepts are with the same, um, the same terms or they are very similar so we don't bring confusion in between the documents because i need i, I think there is there should be a revision of these documents to see that they are aligning between themselves so we don't use different concepts of terms or description for certain things just uh bringing this to awareness yeah i think there was a couple of uh double documents they are all in the git hook now and we're gonna look in, into them in the softgov call to see which ones are duplicate or not, what, what should stay and what should go. Um, has the Nathan Git book has been put into the uh, Git book, Libby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just a note too, I mean, it's one thing to produce content, then there's this whole other thing of how to distribute it. So I don't know if that's been considered or planned for or issues created, um, how and where you want to distribute the content. There, there was one issue on, on ZenHub where, Jess, you provided the instructions for the distribution of the content. That was for Mitch's piece in particular, <laughs> but that needs an additional issue created. Like every, every content piece must have distribution. So Ivy does the tweets and she's on top of that, but just making sure, you know, where is it going? Is it going medium, forum, a tweet, um, posting it in common stack, TEC, OneHive in the partnership channel. Um, is there an email campaign or um, a newsletter? So I think it would be great. Uh, and I think Kate said he's willing to take that on, but just 
in awareness every time we create a content piece we have to distribute it so um you know having a who's organized willing to take it on? who who's willing to take it on you said yeah i'm currently working on a distribution process for both the tec and common stack so awesome. um uh yeah uh hopefully we have I, I need to get more information about the partnerships that we have in terms of uh who are the best communities to reach out to in terms of informing and uh, also um the the types of uh mediums you would prefer like different types of contents to be shared um I know that if you wanted to condition your tw Twitter, for example, to only focus on certain types of information, uh, I think that needs to be discussed with the community, uh, decision to be made. Uh, Nate, is there, is there an uh, open issue that you're currently, that is related to the content distribution? Or should uh, I, I create one? You can create one, yeah. Uh, there is not then, an open issue at the moment. Okay, I will create one, assign you to that. You fill in the details, whatever you have uh, currently, what you're currently working on, so that it's, we have more transparency about like where you are currently with the, within the process. And I'll keep that issue open in the, in the let's say, sprint backlog for now. Um, okay, that sounds good. Okay, and thanks. Eduardo, is this TL, it, Mitch, is your piece going to go on Medium or Forum? um i mean it could go but we already have a tldr like for me the five steps was more of a visualization of the five steps in an easy way rather than a medium post it was just something easy to to put in nice background images kind of stuff not really a medium post but that's up to discussion okay i thought I thought I heard that a medium post. I mean, like we can have a diagram, but you can't really just have a diagram. I feel like it could be a short piece along with when new finishes iterating on the diagram. I just thought the like the TLDR piece on the forum that exists, it's still a bit technical and the how and based on our discussion was, you know, busy token engineers, they just need to know like the super high level a little eggy diagram and a, a short post and that that would maybe I thought that would be better for medium um, to do kind of a, a general high level blog whereas the forum is always more like in depth but um, you mind having that like a small working session where we can check all these documents and then see how we can put them together or how how to um, make them into a medium post or whatever other format we may use. Because I feel we have very similar documents right now and we are not gonna make a post, I feel, for every document. So I feel we just need to shake them all and pick and decide uh, how to present them properly. Yeah, I just, um, isn't this part of the, there's no, there's no okay. post right now on medium. At, at all about the hatch and I think it's important that we have something but that it be like it won't be too hard to rewrite um, just something super high level about the hatch on the medium what were you gonna say Tim shouldn't we I mean isn't this all really like related to the content distribution process like all the art like looking at all the articles we have and where they need to go um, and sort of taking into account everything that we have at that time. Because I have the same question about what we do with all these pieces now, and I think we just uh, haven't, that, that hasn't been decided yet. Yeah, I yeah. think getting consensus around uh, what each, each, you know, whether it's the forum or the medium, like where... Um, we need to have consensus about like what type of content is being distributed where and and how and how that's uh, distributed so i i yeah testing maybe we can have a meeting for it we could hear you mitch was it really loud it was quite low 
Can you guys feel free to have that meeting? I'm, I don't need to be a part. I'm just recommending that there be a less, uh, a more high level general hatch piece in a blog form on the medium, rewritten from Mitch's piece and adding um, the egg graphic or the shapes graphic, whichever you think is better to communicate. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just explain something here. Sorry, my technology is not working today, but I designed the five steps thing to kind of match the diagrams that Jeff made. So loosely like that. So it should be easy for Jeff to plug in the diagrams that he's already worked on right into that five steps document. And it's, it's done. I think four people have already edited it, so it should be good to go. Where does that live? I can send you the link. I tagged it in the Hatcher outreach. I think I tagged some people in there. Okay, got it. I'll uh, make sure that I'll poke Jeff to take a look at it and maybe add those diagrams. Yeah, or I can just pull them over. Uh, just reviewed over. it, so he knows that it exists. Um, yeah, this is the part where I was like, what is the criteria to post on Medium or what is, well, what is what we are looking for uh, by posting there? Do we, do we want to have several pieces regarding the hatch? Do we want a, a, a single piece, a pre, you know, this is something I think we should talk a little bit more about what's the content that will be put there because I don't think we have right now an alignment of sort of how it's going to be or what is going to be posted there. We're just creating pieces. These pieces are sort of ready or have been reviewed, but there is no um, posting strategy, let's say, in a way. So I don't know what you guys think about it or how do you want to structure these postings. So all these pieces will be correlated, not Like a content distribution strategy or or more marketing strategy kind of thing, like think, thinking that way. More marketing strategy, like yeah. thinking that way. Yeah, and to just not double, like double post things that are mentioned already in another post. And then, you know, it will be weird. You know, I, I'm going to, a lot of these issues are kind of distribution or distribution adjacent. So um, what I'll do is I'll set up a meeting if anybody wants to kind of uh, come join and, and discuss these issues, because I, I do think that we do need to have consensus about uh, all of these different mediums of distribution. And um, if we can get get a rough consensus on that, I think we can really organize our content. Yeah, um, yeah, you can set it up, Nate, and then we can have this organization. Um, and we will do that. Well, we Sounds already good. have HubSpot, don't we? That's a that can be a social media management platform in which you can uh, do a lot of that. So. All right. Um, any, uh, we got like 
three more minutes or something like that. Uh, are there any more agenda items you want to talk about? Um, I think we, we covered the hash outreach content. There's transparency medium article. Anything else? Uh, I want to talk about the transparency medium article just very quickly. So um, it's almost ready. So um, it, I wrote it together with um, Zepti and Juan and Nate. So um, we would be sending this to you, Marco and Jess, and maybe the other um, stewards who would like to take a look and um, give their feedback or edit so we can uh, post it uh, already. So maybe tomorrow we'll, it will be uh, done. Okay, you will you will be sharing that uh, on our Discord. Yeah, we can. When, when you want to get the feedback, or do you want to share it right now? Oh no, um, in the Discord, uh, we're still finishing it. Just I'm letting you know in advance, so um, you okay. can expect. It. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't see any more agenda items here. Uh, just back to you. Um, Oh, this? Good to go. And yeah, I'm not sure if somebody else can take on editing the transparency ar article. That would be mm -hmm. great. Yeah, Ivy, just drop it in the um, in the transparency working group. Is that that's where you're going to drop it? Okay, great. Okay. Um, in the last two minutes, is there anything else to cover, or shall we leave um, with two minutes left? Nothing from my side. I'm good to go. Okay. Yep. See everyone Anybody in Safka. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Cheers. everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. See you now.